Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to talk about a short story that definitely fits the unusual and out of the ordinary um, sort of, you know, vibe that I have for this channel. Uh, and today's short story is all about revenge and people with what, pres what I presume to be elemental powers. I am referring to Stone Hunger by N.K. Jemisin, which was published in 2014. For those who don't know, N.K. Jemisin is a Black American author who's been get getting published for quite some time. Uh, she is a uh, MacArthur Genius Grant recipient, uh, and she has uh, written a number of uh, series kind of books, science fiction series books, and uh, short stories, all which follow fantasy or science fiction themes. Uh, and she's been nominated and won a number of awards, including the Nebula and the Hugo, which is important if you think that it is important. I know a lot of people who don't necessarily put stock in those awards, and it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's it, again, winning awards and stuff, it, it, it sometimes isn't, you know, a reflection of who you are or, like, or your ability. It's more of a reflection of who you know. So um, I don't know if that applies here or not, but uh, it, it's still interesting to note that Jemison has won those awards uh, and is um, very well regarded in, in science fiction circles, uh, a contemporary author rather than one of those, you know, old 1960s, 1950s authors that I frequently catalog on this channel. Uh, but without further ado, let's talk about Stone Hunger. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So Stone Hunger focuses on an unnamed uh, girl, an unnamed woman in in the ruins of the old world. She is very hungry, noting that she hasn't really eaten in in um, in, in in like eight days, and she's desperately trying to find food and she's near a um a city sort of a refuge in the in this uh in, the, in this world that's been destroyed uh and she decides that she's going to try to break in and steal some food in order to um uh, in order to to survive uh either she causes an earthquake or uh an earthquake happens and she just makes use of it and she tries to break into the city uh, unfortunately, this fails, and the people notice that she's tried that, uh, and that they end up capturing her after she breaks her uh, leg or something like that. Uh, she wakes up in, in jail, and it's at this time that we learn that she has elemental abilities. At least that's what I'm calling it. Uh, she can cause earthquakes or something like that. She can affect stone. Uh, I'm choosing to call it an elemental ability until I get a little more clarification from, from Jemison. Uh, but yeah, she has those abilities. She, um, the, one of the people who approaches her while she's in jail, Jemison, or not Jemison, uh, Yika, as she's called, um, notes that, oh, I also have those abilities. Uh, and we're trying to live peacefully among these other people. And we learned also that, uh, the people with these abilities were once hunted down. Uh, but now they're trying to live peacefully together. Uh, and Gika doesn't want uh, this unnamed girl to affect that harmony that, it, that exists, especially given how uh, destructive and um, unwelcoming the outside world is uh, at, <laughs> in this uh, sort of apocalyptic landscape. We also learn that this unnamed girl is looking for someone she refers to as the Vinegar Man, someone who uh, ruined or destroyed a city that she once lived in, uh, and um, who she has sworn to get revenge on. And she's followed his scent to this city. Uh, and once Yika leaves, a another person pops up known as the, who, uh, or who um, the girl refers to as a stone eater, like someone who is also an elemental, but more connected to the stone. And he offers to get her out of there so that she can go, uh, you know, kill the person that she wants to kill. Uh, this person seems, or this stone eater seems to have other, um, other motives, other, other goals in mind. Uh, but indeed, the stone eater does break her out. 
And uh, the girl, like, she manages to find her way to the, the vinegar man. And they engage in a interesting conflict where they're both trying to hurt one another. Uh, and this, this draws the attention of a, of a crowd, especially other elementals. And it ultimately, ultimately ends in the girl atomizing the vinegar man, totally destroying him. And then Yika comes along and is like, are you happy with what you did? Like, you're, you're causing a scene. You're going to make things more difficult for us. Uh, but Yika also understands that, you know, with the apocalypse and everything, this mu- must have created a lot of, you know, um, cases where there's, there's revenge or people who have grudges or or like uh, desires to harm other people because of their bad actions and you also know that you know every one of them has that going on for them uh that p- there are people who probably want them dead because of their desire to survive uh, and so yika decides to spare this girl rather than kick her out of the uh the city that they're in uh, and so there's a little bit of hope there for the girl. But as, as the story comes to a close, the, uh, the girl notes that the stone eater is standing over the remains of um, the vinegar man and smiling in a way that suggests he also had a role uh, or a grudge against um, uh, the vinegar man, which is uh, open for more you know, writing down the road, but that's where it ends in the short story here. In terms of analysis, there's a little bit worth talking about with Stone Hunger. One of the um, things that uh, Jemison is doing here is is she's building up a world, uh, a science fiction world, or maybe it's a fantasy world. Uh, I think there's elements of, of both there, but sci-fi b- world building is a is a big piece of this story. Uh, like most of the short stories or this novelette is. Um, as one indicator is is known, I choose to refer to as a short story. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, like Jemison is is building this world and and like using like half the story to really do that. Jemison paints a picture of a ruined world with superhumans or uh, altered humans. It's not quite clear what exactly this girl is in the story. If she uh, just gained powers or if this is another world entirely, it does seem to be um, something like that. Uh, But there's this girl with superhuman abilities and there are other people like that. And before the the Rivening, as they as they called it, before the uh, this current uh, post-apocalyptic period of the world, uh, these people used to be hunted down because uh, they couldn't be be trusted or something like that. Uh, and so that's kind of what all these characters are dealing with. They're allowed to live in harmony now with other people in the city because everyone is fighting just to survive. But there's also that fear that the humans, the regular humans, non like elemental humans might turn on them one day. You also see like indications in the writing how there there used to be quite a bit of sun and now there's not as much sun so kind of a, a cloudy colder kind of world. Uh, walled off cities where people are, again are like going back to the sort of a feudal system. Everyone's in the city and is is trying to keep warm and have as much food uh, as they need. They have food stores uh, which this girl was trying to steal from in this story uh, and noting that and, and Yika even notes like if you if you stole that you would have killed this kill this city like we need this to to thrive you have the elementals as i mentioned before and the mixed living situation with the humans and uh the elementals which is precarious at best and i i I do like i gotta give uh jimison credit i like this world that she's created uh with this sort of science fiction background giving us a lot of information drawing us in but also um it's very apparent that she could do more with this world that she created that she could turn it into a longer format novel or something like that. And it might even be, you know, based on one of her other writings that she's done with the series that she's uh, doing with her science fiction related stuff. Uh, but I'm not familiar enough with Jemison's work to know if she's already done something like that. Or um, if, if this is just like how, how her work normally is, just creating these worlds that uh, leave more space, leave more to the imagination. Jemison is also writing about survival and desperation with this story. Uh, as she notes, like this girl steals from cities to survive. Like she's she hasn't eaten for eight days and she's wandering from city to city, partially to find food, um, but also to, um, uh, to, to find this vinegar man that she's looking for. So a little bit of revenge there too. And I believe she even calls herself like 
or she she thinks of herself like a parasite, parasitic, like leeching off these cities in order to get what she wants and not really being a part of it. Even though she's kind of human like everyone else, she still views herself as, as a parasite, showing how years in the wilderness has kind of affected this, uh, this, young, this girl, this young woman. Uh, and the girl has sort of a, a chained, uh, feral dog kind of mon mindset. Uh, Yika even notes like, oh, you're not completely feral because, you know, you're talking to me and whatnot. But, like, somebody taught you or someone guided you after the world ended. And that's that's what matters most. But it, it hasn't, like, she, the feral dog mindset is still somewhat there. She thinks about the different ways to um, sort of... Uh, uh, sort of like break out of these chains that she's in not really minding that her leg is broken as she's walking through the city to try to find the vinegar man uh, she's she's driven by that revenge but she's also driven by the need to escape and not be trapped like maybe she was in, in the past uh, and then there's also those elements of revenge as I noted before she's fueled by her rage and also a desire to bring justice or what she sees as justice to the vinegar man who destroyed a city where she lived and the people that she loved and so all she has is that that rage and and that need to survive so it makes her even more like a feral dog than than yika would um would indicate and there is a sense that after she gets that revenge against the vinegar man in the story that there might be a little bit more hope for her that uh that one one track i must get the vinegar man mindset has been you know left or like put away or something like that and so now she can live in the city and yika ind indicates some level of hope for that that uh we all like everyone in in this po post apocalypse has has some sort of uh um like some sort of like grudge to or axe to grind but afterwards maybe some there could be something more positive there that's certainly the hope but uh you know the stone um the, the stone eater like his smile at the end of the story suggested there might have been more there so who knows maybe revenge like will just be a constant in in this girl's life we don't really know for sure but uh i i do like how um Jemison is getting at this this desperation to survive, compared paired with this this desire for re revenge, and you know wondering what happens afterwards. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Stone Hunger by N. K. Jemison. Uh, pretty solid short story. Um, maybe not one of the the best that I've read, but uh, one that uh, the with the science fiction elements are are very fascinating and uh, make it you know something that you you'd want to check out and see more of. Uh, I, I'm very curious to read more of Jemison's work because of this. Possibly seeing what science fiction, what other science uh, she's she's been leaning on and touching upon in her work. Uh, yeah, if you read this before, you simply want to comment on something I said here, do so below. Let's have a discussion about uh, Stone Hunger. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this author or the short story if they don't already know. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and elemental travels. Farewell.